Hi there guys, so this is another video on the new Vajra starter plugin I was working on and uh, currently in the beta phase. So there's a new update that has been released a few minutes ago I suppose at this point and I'm excited about the new changes it brings and the improvements. I'm gonna go through all of them. Before all that, let me just uh, tell you what it is and how it's going to help you as a WordPress developer or anyone that is interested in WordPress development. Basically, when you start into WordPress and you want to build something for WordPress, you would be going for a plugin because themes are a completely different part and they only handle the UI. So if you want to do anything that makes a change into the WordPress WordPress core part of the features you would be building a plugin now the basic problem with WordPress plugins is starting a WordPress plugin is typically a bit more um, uh, let's just say a bit more manual process because there's a lot you would need to build first hand in order to get started on your idea uh, is such as the settings page and the file auto loaders in terms of PHP files and uh, if you are into a modern uh, web development you would know that JS is a critical thing here in react and everything you'd want to use all those modern technologies but in wordpress you won't get all of that by default and you'd have to do it all by yourself so what vajra does is brings it all together in one place and does it all that for you um, beforehand and gives it in a package uh, that you can rename replace the keywords of the Vajra and then just begin your plugin uh, development and you can just quickly get started on your idea and uh, uh, without having to worry about the whole uh, initial phase of the plugin, uh, plugin files etc. Alright so uh, we'll be taking a look at all the things that I just said and more into detail in this video um, but uh, let's just say there will be more to come because this is still in the early beta and this is the second beta I'm releasing and uh, I'd be uh, expecting some feedback from you guys whoever uh, are willing to try and uh, 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 let's just get started all right so uh, here's the uh, repo github repo and I'll link it down in the video description so you can check it out yourself as well I have this uh, local uh, environment set up which is nothing but the 6.3 latest WordPress version and uh, some debugging plugins such as debug and query monitor etc. Alright, um, so uh, let's just clone this. Uh, you can either download the zip or uh, clone it. I'm just gonna go with the clone thing because that is what I normally do. I'm just gonna copy this and go into my git kraken and let me clone a repo. You are uh, I'm gonna clone it in the dev, dev. All right, that's perfect. Let's clone it. All right, it is now cloned. Let's open it. Okay, so let's take a look at our uh, local environment, and this should have the plugin. All right, so we have the plugin here, but it won't work right away because we will need the um. um we will need to basically go through the process of installing and configuring it for the php and the js scripts all right so let's do that let's open the terminal and uh, let's go to the folder here just gonna close this and uh, the first thing i'd expect is to have the minimum required uh, node version that is in the nvmrc I'm, I'm I'm running right now uh, nodes uh, 18. So yeah, if you if you are on that, that is pretty good. All right, so let me just run npm install because that's the standards you would do. So, so the first step is to just run the npm install, and this would, as you'd expect, just install the basic components. Uh, sorry, the required components for the um, React side of the client side part of the app. All right, so it is done now and uh, we can simply move on to the next step. That will be, I have already included uh, that in one of the package.json scripts so that you don't have to run the whole thing yourself. That will be the composer command. And uh, these are the commands. So the first thing we ran was the npm install and the next thing we will do is npm run uh, dev uh, ratio and php. 
So what this will do is basically run the composer installer and uh, that's done. So uh, let's also run one final thing that is npm run um, build all. So what that will do is build all the JS or client side part of the code uh, because that will be required for our onboarding process and everything that uh, the plugin brings. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. And I'm gonna go through each of them one by one. So let's just first uh, do the initial steps. All right, so this is done. And you can see there's the just new build folder and the winter folder. So winter is for PHP files, com dependencies, composer dependencies, and the build folder includes the build uh, build scripts. Uh, sorry, not the build scripts. The the source files for our client side app that is built into this build folder. All right, and that is being included in the plugin via the code uh, in the includes. All right, so uh, let's get into it without uh, wasting further time. And I'm gonna go here, refresh it, nothing changed here, but under the vote, there's this is all the required files that we need to run the plugin. All right, so let's hit activate and hope everything works fine. All right, as you can see, this redirected us to the onboarding page and uh, you can see this is now set, currently set to the secondary step that is the plan. And this is a demo page for the onboarding page and uh, this is how the onboarding will look initially and you can modify it to whatever um, uh, design or style you would want on your onboarding page and this is all a part of the central uh, dashboard app so this is not a separate part of react app and it will all stay under one app all right so let's take a look into the dashboard app and here's our dashboard app and the dashboard as normally you would see in any WooCommerce or any other plugin, you would have a dashboard and where you would show all kinds of plugin metrics, details, or any sort of message. So the dashboard page is there. And then there is the settings page because that is one of the most important parts of the, um, of a plugin, right? Because you will need the settings page, uh, to handle all the sort of uh, inputs from the user and then apply that to the plugin all right so uh yeah i'm just wasting time on that all right so you know what the settings page is and uh, secondly this is this is not yet fully built the dashboard page because there will be more components coming in for the ui for you to easily just uh, bring in those ui components and then build on to them such as the notice component or a card or anything of sort that you would be using in a plugin right so we have the logo at the header and we have the navigation and a version um a version number so this will be dynamically updated as per the current version in the plugin that is set in source code all right and um, let's take a look at one of um uh, one of other important pages i think which will be crucial uh, in terms of user experience so that is the change log page so i've initially thought of it and i came to a realization that the change logs in wordpress plugins were so much uh, ignored in terms of what the users should also know that what changes the plugin update brings or brought and uh, i thought that should be a part of this new uh, plugin dashboard because you know whatever changes the uh, change log, uh, sorry, the plugin update brings. Uh, the user should know as well or have the option to know. And uh, most plugins will only have the change log uh, visible in the source code, or if they are on the word .org, you will have to go into the .org uh, development and the change log, etc. Pages. All right. So most users don't do that. I'm pretty sure. And that's why we have this, and this is being loaded. We are, uh, let's take a look at the source code. We, here's the WP dev site. And the source code for that is this JSON file. And this is being loaded uh, for each of this uh, separate uh, chunks, such as new fixes and improvements, because I think handling a kind of sort of like this standard method will only improve in terms of experience for the users and what they should 
be reading and where they should be focusing because you know they would maybe they are interested in only knowing the new changes you know like that all right so you can also uh, the good part about this change log json is you can change this uh, say you don't want to necessarily update this change log json file in the plugin and you just want to have one single dot dot uh, change log dot json file somewhere on a web server on a github resource you can just go into the includes and then in the admin folder and register admin.php and just replace the um, localized uh, variables and the uh, change log url here to something of a url you have such as a github url and just copy paste this sorry to uh, replace this with the uh, url you have and that will simply work just know that it should be in this format uh, in this 0.2.0 uh, sorry the version number and uh, object and then inside that uh, you know separate chunks of new fixes improvements or uh, simple strings if you just have one new feature update or anything right and uh, strictly a json file all right so moving on let's take a look at uh, the other things i also have a note here uh, so let me just take a look at that all right so we have done the onboarding thing let's take a look at our settings page because that is also one of the most important parts of this plugin so the settings page uh, as you can see this already has uh, some fields here uh, listed all right so this update brings many uh, input fields such as the text input field and the toggle input and the multi select input where you can select uh, multiple uh, options and then the radio input and the select input so initially i thought these were the most important and most used inputs in a plugin settings and that's why i did this um, for the uh, first phase of the plugin and uh, uh, this is well laid out and this is all made into separate ui components so you can have suppose uh, this toggle field component let's go into the source code this will be in source and dashboard and uh, components pages settings and then generate settings so we have uh, the generate settings page as you can see uh, the settings layout the settings card this is all uh, basically uh, separate ui components so as you would expect in any react component so let me go to settings card let me let me add another settings card and let me just give it uh, the basic required uh, params and we'll just call something like um, test fields and uh, let's remove the description we don't want that and let's have that here all right so uh, importantly we'll also need to be running uh, npm run dev dashboard i think that's the command and that's where we'll check in the yeah dev dashboard we'll just be running that to have the uh, development script running for the dashboard app let's refresh it all right so let, let's just have this built first all right let's refresh this as you can see here it is the test fields uh, component basically it's a ui component and as you can see it's currently empty you can have all sorts of uh, uh data here but initially uh, the standard way would be to have the input fields here and the components that are ready mid so let's just move this option to here and that will simply work all right as you can see this is all react code and you can easily configure this if you have sort of um worked on the react part of uh, apps and um, it's only using some folks to store the data in the state and then um all right under the hood there's also a lot of other stuff that is going on and we'll discuss that in uh, the later part of this video so let's uh let's take a look uh, into our notes what's next all right so input for fields we have already talked about by the way let's see if this is being saved or not because this is in this version and uh let's uh save it let's say uh hey yeah and the meta description can be set to that and the settings is updated all right 
As you can see, it is being saved. We just refreshed it. We, if you we were to switch it, it is being refreshed. And um, you can imagine, uh, you can suppose uh, all of the setting fields you will input here or add can be easily stored in the WordPress database. And that is all being handled under the hood. And we'll discuss that in the later part of the video. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on to the next uh, part of this segment. And that will be the toast notifications. As you would have seen when I hit save, there's this toast notifications, cute uh, notifications, I'd say. And uh, these are being uh, handled via uh, React uh, dependency. And it's a, uh, it, it looks pretty good in terms of animations, etc. And um, you'll expect this to be implemented everywhere. And I am planning to add as much uh, notifications, not like that, the usual annoying way of WordPress plugins, you would have seen that they appear somewhere in the header and they annoy you so damn much that you just want to uninstall the damn plugin. Uh, it's not that and like the those notifications you just saw when you hit save or something at the bottom or in the header, you have the options to customize. And um, yeah, so you have the navigation, um, the react hash routing that is you can see uh, uh i have implemented this tab to behavior for settings and the settings page stays separate the layout and when you switch to the dashboard as you can see it switches to the different navigation because the dashboard layout stays separate and the settings uh, layout stays separate all right and uh, you can also go back to the onboarding page uh, if you're on the settings page back to onboarding and so it'll take you to the onboarding Right, so I would assume you would have some sort of onboarding uh, process that uh, will go through step by step, or you can completely customize it as per your uh, liking. All right, so moving on, um, we have already covered the change log.json and uh, how it is a switchable resource. Now, let's take a look at our settings um, um, under the hood. Uh, you know, this data storing thing, all right? So uh, we are using the WordPress REST API formula to basically create a REST API uh, route and endpoints to store this data in the WordPress database. So let's take a look and, uh, okay, into the includes folder in source and you'd go into the API and options api.php and you'll see that we have this options API class which handles the WP um, REST route creation and the handling for, uh, sorry, let me just uh, minimize this. All right, so um, getting and setting the uh, API, uh, sorry, the database options and uh, this is as per the standard REST um, methods and at, if you don't know how WordPress REST works, um, please stay tuned. I'll be making a video on that in the coming days. All right. And how you can customize, how you can extend this further. All right. So we have a get, a set and a delete a method. All right. And this is being implemented in the dashboard app via this API. Uh, as you can see in the dashboard API folder, we have local and settings. Uh, uh, functions. Um, these are using the WP API fetch library to basically um, save and update data into the WordPress database using the same WordPress uh, REST API you just saw. All right. So when you hit save, this uh, saves the data into the data bundles. All right. So let's take a look into the um, block and dashboard dev scripts, basically. So as you saw, we main uh, npm run dashboard, uh, sorry, dev or uh, issue dashboard. So these are basically separate scripts for um, using under the hood. They are using WP scripts package from WordPress core team. And uh, these are basically your building uh, blocks for developing the plugin and releasing the plugin. So you have dev blocks when you're building um, blocks. So. If you don't know this also, Vajra also comes with the blocks development support. So you have the blocks folder, you would assume you can add as many uh, folders here and they'll be added as a block in the registered as a block in the WordPress uh, 
editor uh, but you just need to follow the standard code uh, it's already available in the demo block all right i'm not going to go through that because there's already another video previous video where i have gone through that so if you are interested uh, you know please watch that video uh, the secondary being the dashboard and that will handle uh, building the dashboard uh, part of the code for the client side app and uh, the dev php basically this part uh, installs the composer dev dependencies as well and uh, when you are um, releasing the plugin you would basically don't want the dev dependencies to be included because the vendor file we are using to auto load the uh, php files so this uh, Vajra comes with an auto loader and which is uh, what we use to auto load the php files and uh, in this vendor you would also have your uh, uh, dev dependencies from composer and that will also get included if you are to have the dev php so we have this um, separate um, basically composer installed no dev and that is build all under build all and that will build everything for release but i don't think you will need this separately uh, to run this separately because you have plugin zip command and when you run this this will basically run the build all command and then zip the file folders uh, that are needed for a release basically all right so here's the files that will be uh, packaged in the plugin zip because um, you can uh, customize what kind of files you would want and uh, by default the uh, wp script package doesn't include the files uh, in a custom made plugin like this right uh, so you have that there and there is some formatting and linting script uh, as you would expect you can check them out later all right moving on let's take a look into our known because we don't want to waste for the time all right uh, we also have uh, uh, some github actions action workflows for auto deploying uh, wordpress releases uh, to the wordpress.org repository svn basically so um, this is using the 10 up action for WordPress plugin deploys and you can take a look at the workflows in the workflow section and this also um, handles the WordPress assets. So in suppose you have some assets to update and you know how if you have worked with WordPress plugins previously you know how um, uh, consuming the WordPress SVN could be so you know having this workflow via github actions is pretty uh, smooth and uh, you can easily update your .org assets by having a wp sorry a dot wordpress um, uh, folder here and you'd have all the assets there i'll make another video on how to release plugins to the wordpress.org repo uh, so that will handle i mean go through how you can use this actions uh, you know if you don't know already all right, uh, moving on to the next uh, step that will be um, all right so we have already covered the important scripts uh, for this uh, uh, plugin as you can see the dev uh, scripts and the build scripts let's move on to the most important segment of this video I would say and that will be how to uh, make this plugin yours basically uh, whatever your project can will be so currently there's no automated behavior for this and of course there will be um, so let's go through how you can make this your own and uh, we'll first be deleting the build folder sorry let's before that let's first uh, stop the dev process and let's clear our terminal out let's uh, delete the build folder and then the vendor folder and also the node modules folder all right because we'll basically be rebuilding files when we have renamed everything right all right so let's begin you'd want to replace uh you'd want to replace uh these uh, uh keywords i'm uh going through here so that will be the first thing Make sure that you have enabled uh, the match case because you don't want to accidentally replace some other case. Yes, that's a thing in PHP. All right. Anyways, so Vajra, uh, Vajra hyphen starter, and this will be the first keyword we'll be replacing. So let's assume um, we have another 
plugin called randomizer and would want to replace that so make sure that uh, it is in the same case because this could be function names and uh, slug names etc and they might not work with some other case you would want to use so make sure that the case is same all right so vajra hyphen starter so i'm just saying randomizer all right you can say randomizer hyphen anything else as well so that would be so let me just so as you can see 45 matches and we can just hit replace all all right so that will be replaced now uh sorry not training him first let's uh, again replace in files we will now look for uh, uh also let's take a look into the notes we have vajra starter and vajra underscore starter now that will be in caps vajra underscore starter so as i said about uh case matching you also want it uh the replacement to be in full caps right because those will be the constants and uh <clears throat> let's replace that replace all all right so that's done as well and then now let's uh let's replace one more keyword that will be vajra underscore starter all in small case and we'll do randomizer right so there are six matches let's replace all now no we will have vajra uh, space starter so vajra space starter as you can see i am using uh camel casing here we not basically camel casing just uh 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 capital letter f in first letter all right so let's just say randomizer as per that and hit replace all all right 17 matches now there's one more uh, i think remaining that will be vajra and no spaces with the caps and then other so camel casing so this will be like this okay if you don't have another word um separate word so you will just have it like this and then the place off right i think that should do it but if you were to go back to your plugin page you will see that your installation of randomizer plugin know that this is the randomizer plugin and there's also the naming that has been changed to something else that is the randomizer which we just uh, created all right so um let's uh run those initial stuff which we initially ran and uh, let's hope everything to work as expected so we will run npm install all right once that is done let's run npm run dev php i think there should be another script that handles the basic steps with one command so i will make sure that is included in the next version All right, so now that is done. Now we just going to run npm run build um all. Right? All right, that is done. I think everything will work as expected. So once we refresh this, we will know when the uh, notice is uh, gone. All right, so let's refresh it. And you can see there's the new menu page with the name randomizer which we just replaced with and let's go back to that as you can see things have changed uh, the header now includes randomizer uh, title and if you were to go into settings i mean nothing changes here because this is pretty much a demi boilerplate for you and um, if you were to head back to our source um you'll have everywhere randomizer based one and uh, you can also change the name of the file or oh, sorry folder here and that will work as well but then you'll have to reactivate the plugin and you can change the uh, main plugin finding as well so that's all up to you and there's also uh, some uh, name spacing that is going on that is the small down dev uh, name space and you can also replace that as per uh, a name space you would prefer or you just you can remove it basically so i think that's it for how you can uh, make this uh, wordpress plugin scaffold yours and uh, make something crazy with it but just so that you know that i pretty sure that this is not a by default production ready and you'd have to um go through some uh, inconsistencies and i am building up on that and hopefully in the next one or two versions there will be a better uh, uh version that you can simply just 
download and replace uh, actually you don't need to replace so that's that's the second part that in the coming version there will be that uh, there will be a complete uh, builder a website where uh, uh, you will have a few input fields where you can enter the plugin name you want this to be replicated in and that will automatically do all the manual steps we had to do to make this uh, into a custom plugin right and that would be the expected behavior and i am hoping that will be available soon again in that website there will also be the documentation that we just went through and more with the coming changes and all and how you can make extra changes customizations build something that is beyond the scope of this video and uh, we'll go through some other tutorials as well so i am also planning to make videos on this plugin building on top of this a separate demos basically how do you can build this and that plugin on top of this all right so stay tuned for all that sort of craziness that i am going to explore in the wordpress uh, community because i am i have been watching youtube and seeing that there's less to none wordpress development con content and uh, i'd be hoping that i am that change that brings the content that i would also like to see on wordpress on youtube pasting all right so let's move on to the notes and see that if we are ready and uh, yeah we just um, talked about that all right so the website i'll be basically uh hoping for actually leaning towards is inspiration basically react hot toast the toast uh, notification you just saw in the plugin were um this react hot toast and it is uh, by Timo Linz. He's pretty famous for the Split B app and now works at Vercel. So the website is on Next.js and I'm also planning something similar for this. And the uh, um, downloader will be here for the plugin. You can just rename the plugin into something of yours. And uh, some of the features that it already brings will be listed and the documentation, right? So I hope you like this video and if you did, please subscribe and uh, maybe hit the like button because that will help me uh, reach more people like you and uh, i'd be hoping to have you fantastic guys like to have you fantastic people in this community and so that we can grow together and we can learn with each other all right um so with that being said and after wasting so much of your time as well i hope um i you know gave you one thing to you know uh, uh move on uh, and build something good all right so have a great day peace